Hey guys, so this is my top 10 list of 2016. We've had an absolutely shitty year in terms of celebrity deaths. We had a pretty dismal summer blockbuster season. However, everything kind of around summer was really decent. Now my list admittedly will be a little bit different. I kind of got really sick and tired of the, the superhero this like they were all they were credible films but they were just so i don't know like there's gonna be a, there's definitely gonna be one thing you'll see right off the bat that's probably gonna make you all a little bit pissed but i don't know that's just how i felt uh i really enjoyed certain different films and definitely my my top ones are gonna make you all go what the hell but either way here is my top 10 list. I'm going to do my honorable mentions first, and then I'll get into it. There's no real order of the honorable mentions, just this is what I thought. Starting off the list, we're going to do with honorable mentions of Lights Out. Now, I really enjoyed this film. I liked the concept. It was a really straightforward, very basic film. The whole concept of just using the dark. I was terrified of the dark when I was a kid, so this movie really hit me on a on a core. I didn't do a review for it, mainly because I saw it, I think, the last week it came out. But I did enjoy this movie, and it's a very simple film, but I think it was a good idea with its premise. Another horror film on my list is Ouija Origin of Evil. Now, talk about a guy taking an absolutely shit first film and doing everything better in every single way. This film was done amazingly well. The director is well known for taking different taking different uh, angles of horror, and he proved it once again. This is a very story-driven, very character-driven horror film. It's not so much scary, the idea of it is scary, but really, I was not expecting anything as good as this, and I was very happy with that. Another honorable mention is Midnight Special. Midnight Special was a really cool film done by Jeff Nicholas. I enjoyed it. I admit that it ended a little bit unresolved for my liking. I kind of wanted a little bit more. I did like everything leading up to. I thought there was some really cool character drama and I enjoyed the film. And then Spectral. Spectral was a Netflix original that was Black Hawk Down meets Ghostbusters. It was kind of silly but it took itself seriously and it kind of worked. The characters weren't really fleshed out and watching it a second time it wasn't as cool because the film really had this visual dramaticism to it but I still thought it was a good watch. And my final honorable mention, this is going to piss off a lot of you, is Civil War. I thought Civil War was good, but honestly, the whole superhero thing is just... I'm just kind of sick of it. I've just kind of... It's, it's worn out for me. I admit that this had some absolutely fantastic action scenes, and the character drama was really cool, except there was a few things I just thought were really silly about the movie. How Tony Stark was motivated by a black kid who died in a country that he had nothing to do with, not the whole city being up and dropped back down to earth by a robot he created. Or the team getting in trouble for a bomb for, what's it, Crossbones blowing up, and what's her, Scarlet Witch not being able to stop some of the bomb. You know, she only saved more people than were killed, but whatever. And then the hypocrite general saying, you know what, we should do this. Like, there was a lot of things that were cited towards Captain America. I'm actually Team Iron Man in all honesty, but a lot of the narrative moved towards him, and it could have been a little bit more narrow, if I, in my opinion. Still really good film, though. Really enjoyed it. So now we're getting it into the top 10. Number 10 on this list is Deadpool. Now you're wondering, why did I just say all that thing about Civil War, but I'm saying this for Deadpool. Deadpool was absolutely hysterical. It was a funny character film, and it was absolutely incredible to watch with Ryan Reynolds just pulling joke after joke after joke. This was the funniest movie of the year for me, and I rarely see comedies, but this was absolutely hysterical it was different sure it followed the same formula as most heart uh, as most comic book films but at least it was something refreshing and i enjoyed watching it for the humor and the character aspect whether i'll be as much on board with the second one if they do it the same way i don't know but we'll see number nine is 10 cloverfield lane now talk about a movie that i actually went in thinking was going to be garbage because I thought that they were purely just doing this for money reasons. But little did I know, everything up until the last 10 minutes was related to a really good story. An absolutely incredible character drama. John Goodman is absolutely horrifying. He should deserve a nomination, but he won't. 
but he was probably one of the most perplexing characters of the year in terms of film. I enjoyed his presence on the film as much as I hated him, his character. Every aspect of this film answered a question before I even, when I was thinking something, it would answer it and then take me in a totally different direction. I didn't like the whole end with the whole alien dog thing. I thought that part was stupid. It ruined the aspect of the mystery of the film. But otherwise, I really did enjoy 10 Cloverfield Lane. I even bought the special Blu-ray when it came out. Number eight is Moonlight. Now, Moonlight was an exceptional character drama. This was a film that followed a young African boy uh, growing up in a departed, uh, low-income area of Florida and then dealing with his own basically his own inner wants and basically where his position in life is. And I thought this was an absolutely fantastic character drama. The main thing that I kept on thinking is this is boyhood, but it's shorter and it has a point. And as it's not as high up on my list because of how depressing the material is. It's not something you're just gonna like, hey, you know what, I'm gonna watch Moonlight, pop that in, be like, hmm, yeah, you know what, let's watch it again. It's definitely a draining film, but it is still a masterfully well made and it had great character actors and I think that this film blew me away. I did not have any intention of seeing it, but I was really happy to and that's why it's number eight on the list. Number seven is Hacksaw Ridge. Hacksaw Ridge was proving that Mel Gibson can still make a really good movie and holy crap can war be scary. I haven't seen a film on this level of brutality for World War II obviously since Saving Private Ryan and also Andrew Garfield really proved to me that he is a good actor. I've kind of thought he's eh for the longest time uh, but this movie really proved to me his character prowess and like I said, Mel Gibson, you know what, you blew everyone away with an absolutely masterful film. You showed the horrors of war, but you also showed an absolutely amazing individual being able to do something so extraordinary in such a depressing and horrifying time. So that's why Hacksaw Rage is number seven. Number six, now some of you may be surprised where it is considering how much I liked it, is Rogue One. Rogue One was phenomenally well done. I really enjoyed it. Are there issues with the film? Yes. However, as a narrative structure, as a character structure, as a film of ingenuity and difference in the Star Wars universe, it was something refreshing and answered a, story, a question we've had for 40 years, and it really got brought on new characters and it showed that the Star Wars universe isn't just Jedi and Sith, it is people in part and the rebellions aspect of them being a, a multifaceted organization i like that commander krellick is still one of my favorite villains of the year so really did enjoy this film it blew me away because i thought it was going to suck balls gareth erids you did very well my friend then there's arrival which is number five this movie was absolutely crazy good in terms of its narrative purpose the idea of trying to deconstruct an alien language that has no real resemblance not even more so of language or speak but in form or in speaking is that was probably the most interesting aspect of Arrival in my opinion. Denis Villeneuve still is one of the best directors in the business. I am so happy and so excited to see Blade, Blade Runner 2049 because of this guy. Film was really well done, amazing character drama, a really good science fiction film. Number four is The Nice Guys. Now, I didn't do a review for this because I was away in 100 Mile and I didn't get to see it in theaters because it was only in theaters for a very short time. It bombed. However, this is another Shane Black absolute classic. And I think that this is probably one of my favorite Ryan Gosling roles. He and Russell Crowe had amazing chemistry. The whole story was absolutely hysterical. I was laughing almost as much as I did in Deadpool. It was a great character drama, a great, a detective buddy film however the one thing that prevents it from being from the top is it follows the same kind of formula that Shane Black films always do and it's not a bad formula but he actually has essentially created his own formula and I'm kind of waiting for him to kind of go with something different but either way the nice guys definitely deserves number four number three is a movie that may surprise a lot of people is the accountant I liked this movie I know it has 57% on Rotten Tomatoes but Really, from a narrative creative standpoint, this film was different. It had a great performance from Ben Affleck doing a savant who is a who not only is a banker but a trained killer. And 
those aspects you'd never thought would work. There was a romance with Anna Kendrick, which I thought would fall flat on its feet, but it worked because it didn't fully form into the way you thought. The violence aspect I thought would take over, but if anything, it was a side-along part. And just the whole character, the whole narrative, J.K. Simmons' character was totally different from what I expected. This whole movie was different from what I expected. I enjoyed it. There were a little few narrative flaws. John Lithgow as the villain was a little weird. But I really enjoyed The Accountant because it was different, because it was engaging, and because it was cool. Now, number two is La La Land. La La Land, I just saw it, admittedly. I am still reeling from the La La Landness, but this movie is so good. It is a musical, and I'm not big on musicals. It has ingenuity, it has its own form of homage and creativeness to it. The characters of Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone are absolutely incredible. Could you stop texting me? And everything else about this movie was just incredible to watch. The musical numbers are amazing. I already bought the soundtrack. I really did enjoy this film, both from a visual, a filmmaking, and a character perspective. It's a love story that gives its own little twist, and it's probably one of the most memorable musicals I've seen in the last 10 years. I'm that serious. Damien Chazelle is an amazing director. He, he knocked it out of the park with Whiplash and he has done it once again with La La Land. Now, you're probably thinking, what's my number one? I said it when I watched it. Kubo and the Two Strings is my number one film. Now, before you go, hey, that's a kid's movie. This isn't a kid's movie. This is not a kid's movie. This film is a painstakingly well-made stop-motion animation film. I have immense respect for those people who work on this. The amount of time and effort that goes into making a single frame is insane, and this film had so much dedication, so much heart was put into it. The narrative ideal was absolutely incredible to watch. The characters of Monkey, Beetle, and Kubo were so well done. The voice acting was a phenomenal, and this film had maturity to it beyond anything I could have expected. It talked on, it touched on aspects such as death, loss of family, memory loss, mental issues, and loneliness, and just the idea of having a purpose in life and dealing with the fact of loss of life. And this film is a fantastic film for children who are still coming with the coming to the question of why do we die and it also has amazing um, their, uh, adult themes to it that work well and I loved Kubo and the Two Strings. I watched it immediately after I got it on Blu-ray and I loved it just as much. I laughed at the same jokes. That rarely happens. When I've seen a joke I usually rarely laugh at it again as much as I do and I love this movie. I think that Kubo and the Two Strings is an animated film that should be held as a cornerstone and I'm upset that it made as little money as it did because that means the studio may be in trouble. I hope not. I will definitely see whatever they make next. Anyway guys, that is my top 10 list. I know it's a little unorthodox, but that's honestly what I thought. 2016 had a really interesting year. I may do a list of bad movies this year, but I might keep doing the movies you forgot you saw. But I definitely really want to talk about how much I did not like X-Men Apocalypse. So anyway, guys, that's all for me. I hope you enjoyed this list. I hope you've enjoyed the reviews. Thank you all for watching my channel. I went up in subscribers this year. It's not a lot for some, but for me, it was a big, huge boost. And all in all, 2016 has been a really weird year for me with all the traveling and all the moving and the moving back. So I'm really hoping that 2017 is a lot more solitary, a lot more station. Anyway, guys, that's all for me. See you in 2017.